Hey everyone, welcome back. So in today's video, I'll be showing you how to draw this little robot guy. And if you like the content, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And without further ado, let's jump in and do some drawing. So to start this, I want to establish some kind of ground plane. Uh, so I do this little bit of a diamond-like shape, but really I'm picturing a box in perspective and slanting it. Sometimes it's helpful to draw the whole box in perspective. And just remember, if you want to do that, all you're doing is carrying these back to a vanishing point. All the way, you know, you see horizon lines up here somewhere. You kind of have to really start there, generally. <laughs> start with the horizon line. Place your vanishing points. They're further off the page than that. But sometimes it's nice to just eyeball a, a kind of idea like this and, and just go from that. All I really want is there to be a basis of a ground plane because I tend to find that the characters look more believable even with just this basic idea. And you can even grid this out if you wanted. Whatever makes you feel a little bit better about it. You see my lines are pretty skewed. Not a big deal. Okay, so there's our starting point. And what we're going to do is draw this, um, this robot right over top. And it could be a floating robot and you can deviate, do whatever you want. Uh, I was thinking kind of a big head, a little bit smaller body area. And I'm going to go for a uh, bipedal meaning it has two legs, bipad. Um, so something like this, I'll hide the one leg on the side so we get a little bit of a feeling of perspective. And, you know, maybe I'll bring those legs straighter down. Yeah, and I've been wanting to do more robots, um, illustrate more of them because it's uh, there's just so much cool technology surrounding this stuff. It's almost a bit scary, but <laughs> I'm kind of excited for it. So whenever they start talking AI and robots, I'm like, my mind goes right to Terminator. So let's keep it friendly today. No, no talk about robots just destroying life as we know it. Um, so thinking like a couple big eyes. Now just remember, if you want something to look more friendly, you're generally going to give it humanoid features. Um, you know, just think in terms of if, if you were to do one big eye, it's not that it looks threatening yet, I guess. Um, Unless you gave it like a, you know, maybe an arm that came out and had like a drill bit on it or something or, you know, like something jagged. Then all of a sudden this looks threatening, right? But the one big eye doesn't do it as much, but it's it's a little bit more unrelatable, right? We're not used to relating to one-eyed creatures. So it just takes that away a little bit. Uh, so again, if you want it to look more um, relatable, generally going to do like two big eyes. Big eyes too are almost like a kind of an animated or you know kind of like the feeling of a child. Child uh, children have big eyes, right? Big puffy cheeks and all that, you know. So you could use as much as that as you wanted to. Uh, let's just say something like this. Uh, likewise, you know, facial features, all that would would help it to be more relatable. But this is going to be kind of a robot, so I think I'll just do the two eyes. Now we could do some kind of plate around the eyes and reverse color it. Um, that would look kind of neat and you could do all sorts of different concepts with that. So for instance, we could bring this down like this, come around the sides here, give them a little bit of a, almost like a face shield look, something like that. Give them a tiny little mouth down here if you wanted. That immediately makes them look more relatable and kind of cutesy. Um, not sure I want to do that there. I just want to give you some different ideas as we progress through this. Let's go ahead and work on getting some arms and and legs in place. So what I was thinking here is I thought it'd be kind of fun to do the skinnier attachments, upper limbs, and then like the big kind of uh, you know, form shapes, little hands in there, something like that, little mitts. It almost looks like he's ready to start a fight when he's got his arms out to the side. Boy, even when I'm trying to draw nice robots, there's just a little bit of meanness in there. So like that, and same thing with the, the feet. I'm gonna widen these out. It almost kind of makes sense too that it would make them more stable. And then we'll figure out the way the, uh, the limbs are going to move away from the body and away from each other, you know, the pivot points. So I can do these like little round overs right there. Maybe make these, uh, you know, these other parts could be slightly bendable which, you know, you wouldn't see that in humans, but at the same time, 
you'd probably want as much of that uh, as possible for a robot made of metal. So, like, so for instance, right now the torso is just this, you know, big oval, right? It doesn't look like it could move. And that's okay as long as you had, like, these openings and everything else could move independently away from the body and have, like, a, a larger range of movement away from the um, orifice, I guess. I don't know what you call it, that opening. Um, but basically, you'd have to have that because, you know, we're we have to take into account our bodies are malleable and flexible and can contort, right? So if you're designing something that you want to look functional that's robotic, you have to give it these range of of openings and movement. Here's to kind of uh, go to and fro, I guess. So let's let's do that. And you guys are probably like, why are you putting so much thought? It's just a drawing. It doesn't have to be functional. But I don't know. I think it, I think in times. Uh, people kind of analyze the work in that regard almost uh, subconsciously. Like they're just looking at it like, eh, that doesn't make sense. So you got to think a little bit about functionality as you're doing this. So, I don't know, maybe I do like the little mouth. I don't know if I like the, the face shield yet. Uh, you could do other things. You could have like, you know, little... Something like that kind of makes him look, uh, that makes him look a little bit like an alien robot now for some reason, probably because I'm thinking of, you know, those up there. But let's say, I don't know if I like those. Let's go back. What could we do here? We could do one little kind of antenna you know, for good reception. Hmm. Pan back a little bit. And the head shape's you know definitely too boring, so I need to do something with that. So let's let's figure that out. Instead of just a straight rounded head, well we could try slicing off the sides a little bit, then rounding the bottom off that, maybe rounding the top over a little bit higher, give him some little pointy ears. Again, that's kind of like an alien robot kind of thing. Uh, let's try these kind of headphone looking deals on the side. So sometimes I'm just putting these ideas in to kind of spark some kind of creative thought process. So that's why you see me adjusting this and adding so many things. Uh, and generally, I do this probably a lot faster when I'm not explaining in a video, but because um, I'm throwing, I, I look at it like this: I'm trying to get bad ideas out of the way, and there are going to be bad ideas. And obviously, we've already had a few, and um, more on the way. But what you do is by is by doing this is you're exploring different parts of your creativity that kind of already you you really aren't even aware of at the moment. So. That's why a lot of times they're called searching lines and you're, you're really developing ideas, putting in shapes, taking them away, seeing what you can come up with. Like, would he look good with eyebrows? Um, would the eyebrows look better as, as shapes? You know, like big kind of pasted on bits of metal or something like that, tacked on. Um, but they'd need to move, right? So that you could, maybe they're magnets. That'd be kind of cool. So they're raised metal like this. And then on the back side, you'd have a magnet with the uh, mechanical stuff moving it around, and that would control the eyebrow movement. See? Functionality. Okay, so anyways, this isn't me showing you how to draw a robot. This is, in fact, my prototype for the robot I'm going to design. And his name will be Cyberdyne. Yeah, that'll be cute. I can't wait. It's still too plain Jane, though. Let's try a, a little bit of uh, the connector pieces off the headset like this. And then one that just kind of comes out and has a little bit of difference in detail there. Would he have a mic? Is he a, is he a DJ? Is he a podcaster? Is it silly to have the same thing on both sides? Yeah. Come on, brain. Come up with something. You know, maybe I don't like the headphone things. Let's get those out of there. Maybe that's just not a good call. Let's try, hmm, 
It's all been done before. I don't think I'm going to think of anything too overly inventive. Yeah, there we go. I kind of like that. Let's do that. Kind of looks like a little mini Decepticon now. Okay, so there we go. And now I'll give him like a little bit of a, a front part of the foot just so he doesn't fall over. Um, yeah, we'll do that. And we'll just go ahead and clean it up from there. Because if not, I'll just stay on this forever. Put these little light up nodes right there. Okay, so now we will go ahead and clean up this little guy and see what we got. And keep in mind too, I really need to angle, let me change this foot real quick. Uh, so this is where the ground plane is a good idea. So it's kind of a reminder, and I really should have saw this just from, you know, not being in my first five years of drawing. So like if you go across like this, picture these would connect over, right? The other leg is over here. Well, in this case, the knee would not be on an angle away from the body, right? And so would the toe thingy. And this is where adding these little um, bits of information are good because they help you spot flaws. Like I always mention that with suit designs for comics. Like people avoid wanting to draw these complicated suits and, and I get it, it can be a pain at times. But it do, you gotta remember, it does give you some great landmarks for correcting the illustration. So I would turn that to the side more um, and that ground plane helped me to see that. If you notice, the toes kind of line up to this line right there. So, I'm not saying everything the body does is it probably should. The hand even is a good example. See how that other hand's too low? So let's fix that real quick and then we'll clean this bad boy up. Bad bot. That's what we'll call him. Bad bot. Kind of cute and tough at the same time if that's even possible. Okay, so there we go. So now we got bad bot ready to go. Let's uh, blue line them and clean them up. So there it is. We've got our cute little bad bot all uh, drawn up. Now keep in mind, one last thing that I typically do. So I added this effect here. Um, so if you see the difference, let's see, right there to there. See that? I think I like that better. It's like the lights click on. Ready to destroy. Anyways, um, let me uh, show you what I did there. So I put all of the layers inside of a group. I duplicated that group with the background, okay? Reason being is I wanted the glow to radiate outside of these little nano doohickey thingies on the top of his antennas there. So, so basically, merge those together, and that's how I came up with this layer. See, that's all one layer. And then the glow effect uh, works much better. So you grab like your, any brush you want, 
set it to add glow, pick a color you want, and then now what happens is it'll affect all the neighboring colors. So if you want that little glow that goes outside of that area, you need to merge the background. At least that's the only way I've found to do it. So, uh, well actually you can paint in some color first and then hit it and you can kind of get this, but it, it, we're, it gets a little bit of weird artifacts right there. So the easiest way is set it up like this, add glow, pick your color, merge your layers, and then drop it in. Keep hitting it over and over again because the more you hit it, the more it will turn to a hot spot and gives you that nice radiated glow effect. And you can also brush some of that into the metal you know, to get that reflected bounce light. So anyways, hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. I'd love to know what you think as well as what else you'd like to see on the channel. I'll make sure to get that on the schedule. Thanks very much for the support. As always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and bye for now.